A yacht with a mast looks like that. Obviously it's got the big aluminium mast, but also it's got all the rigging that keeps the mast upright. Well, right now, all we've got is a place for the mast. That's where she normally lives. We did promise you guys that we would be showing you around the marina. It's Monday morning, 8.30, so things are still a little bit quiet. And basically, uh, I'm now walking towards the shops, restaurants, and service areas of the marina. It's basically an L-shaped structure that faces inwards towards the, uh, towards the berths here. The first thing we see when we get to the end of this walkway is uh, a, a kind of uh, dealership for Yanmar um, engine parts and Mercury outboard motors. And they also have a few boats that I guess are for sale sitting in front of their shop. Then we've got a dive centre, a couple of guys setting up for the day. There's another ferretaria there that sells um, not just boat parts but also like ferro liquid and soap and stuff like that. Uh, this is the marineras office. These are the guys that help you tie up to the docks when you pull in for the first time. And they generally just keep an eye on everything around about the place. There's a little laundromat there. It costs uh, five euros to wash your clothes on whichever setting you want. And then one euro per 10 minutes of dryer time. We've got a big bag full of stuff that's got to go in there very shortly. So now walking around the corner takes us to the toilets. Hola, buenas. That's the cleaning lady. She's always in at this time of the day. So that's the men's and that's the ladies. There are quite a few restaurants and bars in the marina area, um, but most of them seem to be closed for the winter. Then there's a sportswear shop um, for kite surfing and skateboarding and all that sort of stuff. Next we've got the Argentinian restaurant, that's where we ate one night, that was uh, very good and again we were the only customers in the place, it was that quiet. Then we have Jose's office, Jose of course is the broker that we're buying our yacht from and right next to that is another restaurant which is more sort of a ice creamery uh, coffee shop than a restaurant really. This walks out to the car parking area and just beyond the, that wall there yeah, is a big beach that's, that arcs up across over to those buildings in the distance. So this one here is the Spanish bar um, that does the 10 euro daily menu, really good. Um, very basic down to earth food but really good value and really tasty. And then there's a the Clipper pub, claims to be an Irish pub but um, to be honest with you, it's more like a Spanish bar than anything else. Another restaurant, do have a daily menu as well, but we've never been in there. I have seen a lot of Spanish people eating there, so it must be quite good. And then there's uh, a clothes shop. I'm sure that everything in there is twice the price that it should be. Gourmet steaks and cakes in Cielos, that's Clouds Bar, Bistro. Ah, the infamous Ferretaria, where like globes are a stupid price. That's just a little kind of like souvenir shop I guess. Um, we had a look in there, there's some fishing gear in there but I think I'll go into Mercia and go to a fishing tackle place to buy, buy that sort of stuff. So now we'll wander back to the boat and I'll give you a quick glimpse of Topside. She's got a lot of work that still needs doing to her so we're not going to do the boat tour until the mast is on. Uh, the stainless steel arch for the davits is on and also probably the solar and the dinghy and the outboard. Once all that is completed, all that work is completed, we will do a full boat tour. But for now, take a look at this where the mast should live. A yacht with a mast looks like that. Obviously it's got the big aluminium mast, but also it's got all the rigging that keeps the mast upright. Well, right now, all we've got is a place for the mast. That's where she normally lives. Um, this aluminium section here, um, this is the boom. So the mast and all the rigging have gone. So she doesn't even look like a proper yacht at the moment. 
let me just go forward to the anchor and I'll show you what she looks like looking backwards yeah pretty barren pretty bare so walking back to the cockpit along the side decks here that's our sunscreened Dodger and our Bimini this is mostly mostly where we sit um, when the weather's fine um, big table so it's um, even if we wanted to work out here there's a lot of space to do that as well so not really a proper boat tour just a quick look on deck to see how the land lies so to speak uh, if you can say that when you're on a boat but we will be giving you a full boat tour inside and out once all the construction and building work is over how long have we been looking for a parking spot there first 15 minutes parking is at a premium in mercia parking that's a premium in spain yeah it is Parking took half an hour? Yeah. Half an hour. But we've got the best parking angel in the world. I was just waiting for the one that's just around the corner from the shop. No, the shop's right there. <gasps> there. Oh my right god, there. we have got the best parking angel in the world. shop very kindly gave us one full tank didn't he? Yeah he's filled all the tanks yeah. Oh all of them? Yeah yeah. Oh that cool. Okay so we're off to... We're going back to the boat now because it is already quarter past seven. We've got a 40 minute drive ahead of us then we've got to get this heavy stuff including 30 kilos of lead Onto the from boat. the car to the boat. <laughs> Luckily we've got to um, trolleys now <laughs> with your help <laughs> I reckon you get two tanks on there our complete haul from our shopping trip to the dive shop included four S80 11.1 litre aluminium tanks, four plastic tank boots, four tank valve caps, two 5mm wetsuits and enough lead for three divers broken down by six 3 kilos, six 2 kilos and six 1 kilo weights. Quite a haul, but something we need. Next we've got to get a petrol driven compressor so we can actually refill our own tanks on board. Okay, today's little exercise has been to stock up with lots of tins and things and dry goods and, you know, toiletries and things like this that we can store in behind the saloon uh, cushions here. See? So that's nice and clean and behind every single one of these there's um, ample storage, so we thought we may as well start doing this now. Most I've, put, I've dated them and I've put the names on them because um, anything that was in cardboard, uh, because cardboard carries cockroach eggs, you need to get rid of the cardboard. If you're going to store tins in the bilges where you've got the potential of the water dissolving, softening the paper and having the paper go into the bilges, you also have to take the labels off. But didn't have to do that today because it's all going in behind there. Well, I've been really surprised because all of that stuff that was on that uh, shelf I've put into here, all the sort of soft things behind the seat here and 
all the tins and the other things in here look how much more space there is there's heaps so when you think how many um, other seats we've got <laughs> we've got lots of storage so it's really good so we'll be able to um, put lots of uh, water on board and uh, plenty of drinks and other things like toilet, toilet rolls and I mean we've already got 12 toilet rolls we bought the other day um, but we're certainly well off for storage and you know I've still got um, more art things to buy I've got one cupboard that's in the big cabin uh, forward um, but I'm thinking now I'll probably be able to come and do one of these as well because I think we're well off for space so that's really good <laughs> if you like today's video don't forget to give us a big thumbs up it really does help us out and do subscribe and click the bell icon so that you receive updates yeah oh and leave a comment yeah we really like the comments and now where is the Dremel drill stored why because we're going to have to modify the light fittings down below to accept the new LED lights that we're going to install Ah, oh, uh, it's in the forward cabin in the forward port locker. Perfect. I'll go and get it.